Three people died after a landslide hit a village in the Rumfi district in northern Malawi. A state of emergency has been declared in Malawi after a tropical storm, Freddy, struck the country for a second time, killing more than 100 people. Rescue workers describe being completely overwhelmed by the rainfall and mudslides. The cyclone is one of the longest running in history and has caused havoc across parts in of the end, South Africa. Of, I am personally so devastated. Sometimes when you just pass by these many caskets, you cannot help but shed tears. This is southern Malawi. Whole neighborhoods have been swept down hillsides, washed away by the storm that won't stop. There are plenty of houses, plenty of houses, but they are all gone. My name is Mike Kachimanga and um, I run a number of charity projects here in Malawi. At the moment we are rebuilding houses for people that were affected by Cyclone Freddy. We all know this year Malawi was hit by Cyclone Freddy and uh, more than 100,000 people were affected. So at the moment we are building houses. I am standing in one of the houses that was affected and in front there is a house that we have done for one of the victims in this village. Um, being a resident of, of Blanta, I experienced, I, I know the magnitude which the cyclone affected people here. People lost their lives. Uh, more than 100,000 people uh, lost their homes. They were homeless. They were displaced. That's why I to, I, we decided to make a move to at least build houses for people that were affected by this cycle. A lot of people were homeless. That's why we decided to say, okay, let's come up and make a plan and rebuild uh, these houses. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby. Still here in Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. I know my time is really limited, but I'm trying as much as possible to bring you stories that you've never heard of. The untold stories of Africa. And this is why I'm telling you guys, like this video, share these videos. I mean, subscribe and be part of this awesome channel to be inspired because that is the main reason why we are on this journey. The challenges have been many, but we are not giving up just because of you. And stories like yours are the reason why we travel all the way from our countries just to come to towns and villages to tell inspiring stories. I just want to tell you, I've heard your story, and I just want to tell you, you're amazing. Thank you, brother. And thanks for impacting lives in this community. Thank you. And your impact will forever live on. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, and welcome to Blanda, my brother. Thank you. Thank you for making your time to, to meet me. Thank you for I'm having very me. very humbled. I'm very humbled. No, I mean, what you're doing is humbling. That's mm. how we came. Okay. Listen, mm. what I read about you mm. is like you're building houses for mm. people that were affected mm. during like on uh, Freddy. Mm. Is that true? Yes, that's absolutely true. How, how that's many houses have you built for people? We have built so far about 60 houses, but our plan is before this year ends, we should do uh, extra 164. Like in total, by the close of this year, there'll be 204, yeah? You, you just woke up mm. and decided mm. to build for your own people. Mm. <laughs> is that the only thing you've done in this village? No, we've done a lot in this village. As you can see here, this is like a free preschool. Free? Yes, it's a free preschool. They're not paying anything? Nothing, bro. This is a free preschool that we have, we have done in this village. There's almost like 100, 100 kids that are learning here. Because in Malawi, we have, we have got a challenge. We, the government does not give us uh, preschools. The no. government does not give us preschools here, okay? Uh, so kids, they're just growing up mm. to maybe when they're six, that's when they enroll in primary school. Mm. So I thought like, oh, come on, that's a gap, man. Like, it is only those people that have got like money that they're able to send their kids to those private preschools. Mm. That means those kids, they're able to do well in schools. So it's like here, there's a gap. Because in villages like this, you go to primary school, you find someone 14 years of age, then grade one, then grade two. 
Yet you go in urban areas, you see maybe seven year old, they're in grade five because their parents are able to send them to preschool and they go high. The child's like, okay, fine, we put up a preschool like this. So at least that gap uh, will, be, yeah, will, be, will be covered. Because education is power, man. The more we educate people, the more we will um, in future try to maybe to elevate poverty. What are you building next to it? Here, uh, we are building a clinic. This is a clinic, man. It will be like under five. Yeah, and of course, there will be also major services that will be handled there. Because this village, there's no free clinic. This is absolutely free. It's going to be a free clinic. They'll be accessing medical care for free. People from here, when they're sick, they have to travel maybe 15 kilometers to, to access medical care. What motivated me is because there's one guy that works here. Yeah. The wife was pregnant. Yeah. And at night, she almost lost her life. They had to carry her on a bicycle. Oh my like goodness. 15 kilometers. So I was like, whoa, man, we need to do something about this. Otherwise, we'll lose lives. That's all like, okay, fine. Let's put up a, a free, a free cl clinic so that people can access. Uh, you're, you're building houses? Mm -hmm. You built a free preschool? Yes. You're building a clinic? Yes. Can I ask you mm -hmm. what really inspires you to do what you do? I, um, the love of God, man. I cannot lie. I'm born again Christian and... Uh, my Bible, or my Jesus, teaches me to love uh, my neighbor as, as my brothers. So I just take love, I put it in front. Uh, because there's no means, man, in this life to accumulate so much worth to yourself. You die, you leave everything behind, man. It's not a purpose-driven life. Actually, what I'm doing here is purpose-driven. I know I make God happy, man, by doing what I'm doing here. You know, you're making God happy, mm -hmm. but you're making me happy too. <laughs> you know, because seeing... Africans mm. supporting Africans. Yeah. Africans bringing fellow Africans out of poverty. Mm. Africans impacting in the lives of other Africans. Mm. It's something that we need to encourage in Africa. Yeah, exactly, man. Exactly. You know, I, I always tell people, mm. you see these two hands? Mm -hmm. God gave you these two hands for a purpose. Mm -hmm. One is to help yourself. Yes. And the other hand is to stretch it to help others. Mm. You've really inspired me, man. Thank you, my brother. But uh, what do you do? I, I mean... <laughs> um, I'm an agro-dealer. So I export produce uh, to most of South Africa. Yeah, okay. So I'm just an agro-dealer. Yeah. So you, 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 your profit from your agro... Yeah, I take some, not all of it, and I use it in these things. Yeah. I don't take 100% of the profits I use, no, but some of it. So this clinic... Okay. Uh, Shuari, in the coming... Two, three weeks. To be done. It'll be done. Two, three weeks it'll be. So you it'll employed the people from the community yes, to work on to it? Work, yeah. They're the one building it themselves. Sorry? The, the people from the community are the one building the... No, place. I find some are people from around here. Okay. But most of them, we are taking them from up there. Because most of the people here do not have that skill. Yeah. So these people are coming from up there. Okay. Every morning, they there's a truck that brings them here to work. Like 6 wow. a.m. Wow. Yeah like 6 a.m. So you see, we just divide, like this would be like, um, uh, that's the reception, what right? mm. there'll be, people will be collecting their drugs there. Yeah. yeah. So maybe a doctor will be in here, maybe a nurse. Mm. Yeah, we'll put, uh, we wish to put some beds in here, maybe yeah. like when someone is really, really sick and maybe they're waiting for an ambulance to take them to a general hospital. Yeah. Yeah, so there will also be, uh, there will also be put here. Oh, this is really inspiring, man. Mm. Really, really inspiring. Yeah. Um, how do you feel whenever you see kids in school? Knowing that it's because of you, that's why they are in school? I feel very, very motivated to do more. It makes me sleep at night and I feel very motivated to do more, man. Because we can't just watch people suffer. No. We can't just watch people suffer. We need to... The little that we have, mm. we need to put it in and... Uh, and help others. Yes, sir. Yeah. So like this guy, these guys, they're coming all from there. Mm. And they come, come and work. work here. And even some of the houses, they're the ones that, that built. As you can see, those boys, they're carrying those doors. They're yeah. going to put in the houses that we are. We are building. Yeah. So, I mean, how many families are living in one, like, in a house? Is it a whole family? One house for one family? Yeah, one house, one family. 
one house, one family. Yeah, it's one house, one family, one house, one family. We we'll would love to check out one of those houses. Yeah. Around here. Yeah. They're all around here. They're all around here. They're all around here. And also, apart from this and this, we give people water also. You can see that borehole there. Oh, we there was did, no water here too. Yeah, we did. We did that borehole here also. Uh, what have you done that I've never asked you? <laughs> I, because I, I, I feel oh. like all I knew was you building houses. I mean, and now you told me you're building a preschool. Yeah. What, what at all have you done that I have no idea about that you're doing uh, in this in this community? In this community, also maybe offering bursaries to needy needy students. Because in Malawi we are lucky. Our primary schools are for free, but our secondary schools they are not for free. So imagine uh, people in the villages, people mm. in there's so many people in needy families. Mm. They are not able to to fund for their education. So um, we are also offering uh, bursaries. Mm. There's a lot of kids that want, but apparently we're just dealing with about 102. But I know there's so many that want. Yeah. Wow. There's so many that we'll, want. We'll love to go check out some of the uh, houses you're building and okay. we're going to take it from there. Yeah, that's fine. Bro. Okay. The breeze oh. in here. <laughs> so fresh, man. Yeah. Wow. So, geez. So like behind there, it's, there's something that was before. What the house they used to live in, bef uh, that was hit by the cyclone. In front here, that's one of that, and him is is the chief for this area, like a tri tribal chief. Tribal chief. Mm -hmm. So he was affected also. So he was also affected. Yeah. So we built him this this house here. Wow. Yes, I'm full. Mazuka. So he does not know English that much. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. mm. Yeah. So behind there, there's like the disaster affected house. Okay. Then we've done this one. He's Always. moving, he's gonna move in tomorrow here. So you, you did this during the, like after, after the cyclone, that's when you started or yeah. you, were, you were building for people before? Oh wow. This is where he, wow. he used to live. So this is before, this is now. <laughs> he used to live here. Now we've done that. So almost every family that have built there, people that are so needy, that cannot, no matter what, they can never be able to put up a house for themselves. No matter what. They are really, really poor people that cannot even afford a bag of cement. Zero. Zero. And I'll say, God bless you. How many people were affected by this? Hey, thousands. I think it was hundreds, something thousands in, in, in Blanta alone. So the, the, the demand is just too much, but we can't be able to. Help everyone. For everyone. Yeah. So how, was, how, how, how are you selecting people that you build for? Uh, we, do, we do a survey. Now we go to them and we analyze their situation. We interview them, check out. Then we say that these are really, really down people. They can't do anything. Some are widows. Some are orphans. Some are what? The people that have nobody to support them. We target those ones. And some people too that lost their families. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. So this is a fresh one. Tomorrow, he's gonna move in here. Hmm. I can guarantee this house, even seven, 50, 70 years, it will still stand because of used cement and everything. As you can, you can see it. Because this, this was more like clay. Mm-hmm. Because they, they don't have money for cement, they just use clay to build village houses. Wow. Yeah. So you got sixty of this in this village. Not in this village. This village of done 20. There's 20. another village. Wow. We did we did 40. Wow. Here we've done 20. But I'm I'm gonna move to more villages, more villages. Because I've got uh, 15 villages that I need to address. Hmm. At least by November. Hmm. Uh, God willing, then it'll be done. Do you need help? Exactly, man. The numbers are just enormous. There's thousands. If you, if even if you check, you check online, you see that there's more than hundred thousand people that were affected here in Blanta alone. But cyclone did not only hit Blanta. Cyclone hit uh, a lot of districts here in the southern region. But I'm only doing Blanta because that is what I can manage right now. Is it where you're from? 
I'm from Lilongwe, but I've lived here long enough. Sometimes I can just say I'm a blighted person because I've lived here more than 10 years. Yeah. But uh, there's people in Insanje that are affected. There's people in Chiladzu that were affected. We cannot be uh, able to reach out to them. There's thousands, more than 100,000 of people mm. that were affected. But look, we're only right now addressing 100 something or 200, that, which is far below. I'm going to put his number on the screen, his email on the screen. If you get touch or inspired of what he does and you really want to be part of this course, please just do so. And um, my brother, what has been the major challenge in terms of what you do? Finances, man. Yeah, that's the only challenge because I've got a team of young people that are willing to do this work. I've got 136 volunteers here in Blanta that come on my office every day just to come and help these people. They're young people that I'm not even paying. They just have the heart to, to help. Meaning if we have got more finances, we can do more. Has the government reached out to build support to build more? Reach out to me? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Nobody in Malawi has reached out to me to say we want to, to help you do this. So how do you do it then? Is there any other people that are also yeah. supporting yes. you and some I've, of that? I've, I've got friends, Taiwanese, the Tsuchi friends. Yeah. Very good people, man. I've, uh, their love is just so amazing. Man. They have been with me since because I've been doing this since 2018. Man. Mm. Yeah. So these people, very loving people. But nobody in Malawi has ever come in and Mm. I, I, I think that needs to be changed so fellow Malawians fellow Africans watching this video please this is a one man trying his possible best to change the community and I believe that with our support we can do better if you had a chance to change one thing in Africa what will it be um, the narrative that we can't do it because we've got the potential man even Malawi, I know we like third poorest, but we've got potential to do amazing things. We, have, we Africans, we are very good people. We are blessed people, man. Our land, our continent, we are so blessed. So the narrative that we always have to wait for us, like the white or the what, to come and help us to do things, that is so bad because us Africans on our own, we can do very big things, man. We can do very big things on our own. We, we just have to believe. Yes, we just have to believe. Your message to Africans watching us right now? My message to Africans that are watching us, we've got the potential. Let's just eliminate the element of uh, uh, jealousy, you know, among us ourselves. We should not put, degrade our brothers. Let's come together as one and do big things together. That is my message to my fellow Africans. And um, I will tell you guys, come support a brother, help him build more houses. And I know that your impact will forever live long. My name is Watermaya. Don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe, and be part of this awesome channel. I'll see you all in the next one.